Okay, so uh, welcome uh, to this uh, course on electronic waste management uh, issues and challenges. This uh, course is being rerun this year. This was uh, this course first trained last year. So the week one has started, and uh, we are seeing a lot of uh, uh, questions coming up on the discussion forum. So that means that you are watching the videos and you have uh, certain queries, which is very good. Keep posting your questions. So what we thought in this particular uh, module is that we will try to answer some of the questions through this video, uh, which has been recently posted, and. Uh, and also talk uh, about in general about some of the how you can pose the questions and other stuff I'll show you through the course website as well. So uh, let's look at some of the questions first uh, in the, and then we'll go to the other, other aspect. So just very new questions, uh, uh, just recently we got question from uh, Abhijit uh, Balla Vyas. Uh, he is talking about that uh, sir many waste like plastic, garbage, chemicals from factories and industries has shown the impact on environment in the form of land pollution or water pollution and therefore we are focusing on this topic. So sir my question is, is e-waste has shown the ill effects on the environment or is it going to show in some year? Uh, so the answer uh, to that is e-waste is actually showing uh, ill effect on the environment already. If you look at uh, in, the, in the videos of the course videos that we have posted, uh, I have shown uh, an example of a village in China, uh, where uh, even entire uh, surface water source of that village was uh, contaminated by lead, the pH was almost close to zero. So e-waste is, so, is showing impact already. You see the e-waste impact in uh, if you go to the outskirts of the big cities in India, wherever the e-waste is being uh, managed in a very informal way, you see the impact there. So why, see the question is whether it's an e-waste, whether it's a plastic waste, whether it's a municipal solid waste, hazardous waste, what is the impact actually comes from the different chemicals present there. And many of those chemicals have certain toxicity, uh, they have uh, negative impact on uh, aquatic species, they have ne negative impact on uh, a different uh, species present in, on earth, including humans. So that's why we see the impact. So th these are different waste categories, but the impact is essentially coming from lead, from mercury, from arsenic, little bit of arsenic is there as an e-waste, cadmium from our batteries, and then lots of uh, organics, which is also present in e-waste. So that's why you see the impact. The answer is of course, yes. And the same impact comes from garbage chemicals and other factories as well. So e-waste is just one category of waste. Now, other question uh, it says that uh, e-waste is causing harm to the environment and human health. Uh, and, uh, and the question is coming from uh, Bharat Kumar Gaur, uh, which is uh, I just uh, posted. So e-waste is causing harm to the environment and human health, but why is the government categorizing it under non-hazardous waste? What will happen if they term e-waste as hazardous? See, the regulation is, of course, uh, is presently calling it a non-hazardous waste, and e-waste in country like India, we are focusing on e-waste in slightly different way because we have e-waste management rules as well. So the question of uh, why it is non-hazardous, just because so much volume is out there, we want to promote recycling of electronic waste. So if you term it as hazardous, uh, the recycling activities gets, uh, gets affected. And also if you look at the electronic waste, if you look at your computer or a laptop, not the entire computer and laptop is bad or harmful for environment. Some part of it is plastic, part of it is glass, uh, so copper wires. So they can be recycled. The problematic part is what is there in the printed wire board. So the printed wire board by itself could be a hazardous waste, but presently to promote its recycling, to promote the resource recovery, the government has not categorized as a hazardous waste. And it's not only the government in India, it is uh, many governments around the world it is not calling e-waste as hazardous waste as of now. So that kind of answers your question. And yes, in future, if uh, they might, uh, uh, if, if required, they may put it in a hazardous waste category, but presently it is exempted from the definition of hazardous waste category, mostly just to help the e-waste recycling industry. So that's what, uh, and uh, of course, but at the same time, the e-waste recycling industries has to follow the e-waste management rules in India and similar rules abroad. And that prevents the impact on environment, prevents the impact on human health. So we are taking care as per rule. Implementation of rule becomes a problem, which is in many countries, many developing countries, that's an issue. 
Now we have one uh, from Stephen Matthews, uh, that is his uh, uh, email address. Uh, it says, if the government terms it a hazardous waste, then the laws becomes more... So basically, so he tried to answer this question, which is very good. So yes, if you can... Uh, if you have the answer, uh, I would all that that's a good uh, uh, example. That if if certain questions is posted on discussion forum, and if you think that you have answer to it, and you want to carry over to carry the discussion, do that. It's always better to learn from each other as well. So as uh, Stephen Matthew says here, which is I just saw it actually. He said that if the government terms it as a hazardous waste, then the law becomes more strong. Much more people get discouraged from informal from uh, informal recycling sector of e-waste. Uh, laws will become strong. Laws are already strong actually. Laws is uh, not that uh, laws are not strong. It's the implementation of the law which I just mentioned uh, which becomes a problem. And whether people will get discouraged from informal sector, th that, that rule is already there. Uh, the reason uh, uh, this uh, things are going to informal sector is the formal sector is not able to pay to the consumer. See, we, I, I, we discussed that in the video as well, that what is happening is this uh, e-waste recycling companies are being set up. They are trying to do business and uh, since they invested so much money to set up that particular company, so they need to get, those, get that money back and to make that happen, they have to charge. Say, if I dispose a certain mobile phone, I have to charge certain money for it, which is, which they are, uh, which for informal sector actually pays you some money for that. So that's why the reason uh, it ends up in informal sector and not going to the formal sector. So that's and there are some other complexities involved there, some uh, which we uh, like beyond our control, some politics and other things which can, does go in there as well. But uh, so even if the government terms it a hazardous waste, whether it will become uh, laws are already good enough for e-waste. So I don't think that will help in uh, getting it away from informal sector. Maybe a little bit, but. Uh, the focus is more should be exist implementing the present e-waste law in later and spirit and that should help in terms of uh, uh, managing it in a much better way. Okay, so let's look at some more questions. So it says uh, in the slide 22 there is an informal sector accounts for 90% of e-waste recycling and only 5% reaches to authorized recycler. My question is how to get more authorized centers and how to control informal recyclers and what is the impact on authorized centers to get more profitable? So again, uh, as I just said in the previous answer to the previous question, it is uh, the economics of uh, how the things are working. Uh, there are in terms of uh, collection centers are also, there not many collection centers have come up. Uh, the whole dynamics of that particular e-waste recycling business is uh, it's not working in, in the favor of in, in the favor of formal sector right now. So enforcement of rules, trying to make even the companies and uh, like a, as a normal household owner, when we dispose e-waste, if we can, it's, it has to be contribution from each one of us in terms of uh, taking the taking the where he was recycling from informal to formal and uh, what I always uh, which I say in the video as well that uh, we cannot really uh, ignore the informal sector we have to somehow make a bridge between the two and which many other countries try to do that where they left uh, all the basic stuff with the informal sector so basically if you have a uh, old computer dismantling part and other stuff the informal sectors was formalized. They were are given the tools where they can take it apart because this informal sector is also making money. They are making a living. You cannot take somebody's living away. Uh, that's uh, uh, that's that's that becomes a problem. So you have to give them the livelihood as well. So somehow the marriage between the informal and formal sector is needed in terms of uh, getting this uh, work done. And uh, more authorized centers needs to come up, and all those things uh, need to happen. To make it uh, make a better uh, recycling of uh, e-waste. Yes, so here uh, it says uh, okay. Every country has their own rules and regulation. Even for solid waste, some countries consider construction and demolition waste separately. For memory waste, also depends upon. Okay, this was uh, one of the uh, response to one of the question. 
and because the question was why different countries have different definition of e-waste and uh, the reason for that is see every country has has developed their own rules and regulation and it has it depends on how things have evolved in that particular country so we give an example here that uh, even uh, for solid waste some country considers cnd as part of uh, uh, municipal solid waste in some countries they don't so the way things have evolved there for example in the e-waste uh, if you go to united states uh, those white goods refrigerators microwave uh, tvs and other stuff is considered separately while if you are uh, in, uh, in 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 european union these are part of uh, electronic waste so it's just the way things are defined in different countries there is nothing very specific about that there is nothing much scientific about it either so there were some questions on e-waste growth in India, whether the graph showing cumulative data per year data. So again, we answered that it's not a cumulative data. It is uh, the data per year, and then that has been added up. So those, uh, those are type of questions which, you're, which you can see on the discussion forum, as you can see here, uh, like we have uh, opened that course website. So what, what we do is we encourage you to uh, put your questions up there. And as you can see, we have uh, tried to answer uh, the questions uh, as as quickly as possible. Uh, we, our goal has been to answer it within uh, 24 hours. Uh, we are we are trying to meet that goal. So that's uh, in terms of uh, question. Uh, so uh, again, this is uh, this is a kind of a newer type of course. I will say e-waste is not that uh, old topic. It's a slightly newer topic, and as the reports and other things keeps time to generate so one question one question that we have seen for last uh, all of the courses started just a, a few days back but we have been receiving questions uh, for almost uh, two three weeks now uh, on different aspects which since the week one video was out there so uh, th th there is some uh, some questions has been that the data is a bit old uh, and whether the data is still applicable it's, it is, uh, data is, uh, in some of those slides, data is old, just because uh, the reports that is available in public domain has the older data. Uh, we have been trying to bring newer data as much as possible, but as you can understand, uh, these reports, the government reports, or uh, like a UN reports, World Bank reports, they take time, they take time to get uh, made. And sometimes that's why you see older data. For example, in Indian contest, from a government point of view, after that Rajya Sabha report, which came out, I think, in 2012, we, we don't have a comprehensive report on e-waste management. If some has come out very recently, like in last few weeks or last few months, uh, I, we, we have been keeping tra track of it. But if, if we have missed something, uh, what I always encourage in a course like this, since this is not a basic course like a soil mechanics or a fluid mechanics uh, course where things are based on certain uh, formulas and all those kind of stuff. Here, these are the dynamic topic, things keeps on changing. So I request all the course, uh, course participants that if you find some newer data, put it on the discussion forum and it will help us to improve the course uh, when we update those slides uh, for next offering. And of course, we will uh, do that exercise as well from our side when we before we do the next set of recording, uh, whenever we do it. But uh, if you find something, put it on the discussion forum. At least we can discuss it. At least we can have a discussion on a video like this, where uh, if something important has come up in this area, we can uh, uh, critical critically have a review of that particular report, and we'll be happy to answer questions on that as well. But in terms of whether whether the data is old or not, the bottom line is we are talking about. What, what is e-waste, how the e-waste is being managed, what are the critical challenges, what are the technologies. So those information is as relevant it was last year as at this year. Uh, some of the data is definitely older data, but uh, it was true for the year for which it was reported. So since uh, you can, from the newspaper report, you see that uh, certain uh, information will keep on changing since we are producing more and more e-waste, which has been projected as well. In some of those uh, slides, we have shown some projection data. So we can compare the projected values from the real values reported uh, in newspaper reports and other places. Uh, so that's it says, uh, so it says, a new, it talks about the newer data. Uh, if you have so many reports, of course, we, saw, we said that if you have any reports or journals available, you can uh, put it uh, on the discussion forum and we'll be happy to answer that as well. So then it says, uh, 
to complete the assignment we need the course material in text form will it be when it will be available to us so i think you are talking about the transcripts so i think the transcript will be available to you because it uh, gets automatically generated but once i'll check it and i'll uh, will put the answer uh, on the, on the discussion forum for that so uh, in terms of uh, uh, lecture slides it is available uh, lecture slides are available in the pdf form so for your assignment you don't uh, of course you should list you you, uh, the, you should listen to the video but at the same time you you uh, if you need to you can have an access to the pdf version of the slides so we can which you can find under uh, lecture material tab so if you go to the week 1 lecture material tab you will find that pdf so that's where you will get all the slides and uh, in terms of uh, uh, what the video are also getting transcribed as a transcript so those transcript will also be available and i don't know when it will be available but you will you will probably find it i think it might be right over here it says uh, yes i think uh, maybe the tab is here and uh, if you can let's see if it uh, probably it'll open yeah, while well, internet is not that fast so we'll get it uh, we'll get it open yeah. it's trying to load so so transcripts are being made for each of the NPTEL course as those, those of you are taking uh, you might be aware of that as well. So in uh, so again uh, uh, this is the week one you will have to do assignments uh, every week this is only a four week course uh, it's a smaller highly focused course so you will do the uh, assignment at the end of each week if you have not registered for exam uh, go ahead and do that uh, since you are taking that course why don't uh, get the certificate as well and uh, for that i would encourage you to uh, register for exam and exam questions again uh, those of you have done the week zero quiz or will do the week one quiz the exam questions well, usually are similar because uh, that's how there is a certain uh, 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 like format that nptl office has so if you have taken some other nptl course you know what kind of exam questions are asked so most of it will be uh, like whatever you do in the class, uh, whatever you do in the assignment, whatever you learn uh, through the videos. So those are the only type of things can be asked in the exam. Of course, exam question has to be different. So, so it will look a little bit different part of it. But uh, most of it you will find uh, uh, similar stuff showing up there. So here, here is your, uh, we, like if you, if you scroll down. So for example, if we are in week uh, lecture one. So as you can scroll down, there is a uh, transcript of the video is also available. So that's uh, uh, that is which you can use uh, for uh, for reading uh, of this particular uh, course as well. So that's uh, I think uh, um, I think we have uh, covered uh, kind of what we wanted to do today in terms of this particular video. Though, so the bottom line is again uh, go over weekly material, take the quiz, any questions, put it on the discussion board and uh, we can uh, look at uh, we'll be able to answer those questions some of the older questions we have also uh, downloaded them which uh, is, we got before the course started so we i'll just try to uh, look at some of those which we have uh, kind of uh, downloaded and put it uh, on it uh, on a word file so this is what we are also like every time you put a course put a, uh, a question we uh, bring it to a word file we also sometimes we also have to do some research to answer your questions because uh, uh, many times the questions are not directly related to the uh, course content. Uh, something comes to your mind and you put it there. Uh, many times, in sometimes they are not even uh, I would say relevant to the course, but it's still we try to answer <laughs> because if it's a general environmental related course, we answer. And uh, if we if it's not at all uh, which I cannot answer, I will just say it, uh, this is beyond the scope, and we'll, we we will not do that. So I'll be just quickly I will show you some examples of uh, questions, and these are these are all available on the discussion forum as well. So it says the first one of the first question was, can you please tell us about the extraction of copper by using microorganism? So this is a very broad code, very broad question actually because uh, microorganisms is used. There are different types of methods for uh, bio leaching of copper. So it's a very broad field. So rather than, uh, uh, so we don't, we were not sure what exactly this student was asking. So we ended up uh, uh, giving him a, a chapter of a book that he can look at uh, biomining theory, microbes and industrial process, 
there is a book uh, edited by D. Rawlings, which is the second chapter of the book, is on bioleaching of copper. So he, he or she can go there and find out that information. And uh, other questions like why there is so much import of e-waste in India, of course there are market, we are doing recycling of e-waste here and uh, things are, uh, rules are a bit relaxed, although rules are uh, on paper they are very strong, but in implementation side it is not that strong. So that's why many of the e-waste do come to India and it's the problem from both sides, problem from who are sending those e-waste and also the problem who are receiving those e-waste. So, it's, and many times when they send the e-waste, it doesn't come as a e-waste. Uh, it comes essentially as a used electronic products for, uh, say, some poor neighborhood in India. But most, when it arrives here, most of it arrives as basically dead on arrival. So, those kind of uh, things. And then why there is a standard definition of e-waste would not have been easier had the standard definition was there. So, we had uh, uh, replied back uh, that uh, the solid waste uh, definition does vary, so e-waste also definition va varies. So there are, uh, there is a global definition of e-waste uh, which is published uh, in, uh, as it, there was a white paper uh, called Solving the e-waste problem uh, which uh, was done by United Nations. So we had to give a reference to that, so here the students can go and look at the different definition of e-waste and a little bit of a background on how those definitions came about. So essentially, as I said earlier in this video, it depends on how the country evolved in terms of its e-waste management. So that's why the definition is slightly different. It's not the definition is too much different. It is just slightly different. Some, some countries, certain things are not included, especially if, uh, for example, in the US again, the US or even in Japan, uh, this uh, big uh, electronic uh, or electrical uh, uh, items from house like big refrigerators or uh, microwave and other stuff, they have a separate uh, industry out there which recycles those. So this is already there, we, even be, before this laptop and microphone, uh, laptop or mobile and other things they started coming on in the waste stream. So since that industry was already there, that's a white goods recycling industry, so they are not included in e-waste. So other items are. Then uh, we talked about uh, that higher voltage stuff also is not included because they are the heavy industries, they are uh, recycled in a, in a different way. Uh, this, those things were already recycled. And uh, then there, are, there were other questions in terms of uh, metric turn or regular turn since US uh, uses uh, regular turn, other part of the world uses metric turn. And, uh, so there is a difference uh, between the, the two, uh, metric turn is 1000 kg uh, and uh, US turn is, uh, is 907 kg actually because it's coming from the pound. It's 200, uh, 2000 pounds is uh, one turn in US uh, but metric turn is 1000 kg. So that's how the definition is slightly different. There was one question that people use silver as a tooth. Does it not cause problem to them as it is used by dental doctors? So again, uh, see health impact from any chemicals will depend on the exposure level, what is the concentration and at the same time how long the people are using it. So there might be certain silver in my teeth if I have done a tooth done with some silver. But if that silver is just there, it is not leaching off, it is, uh, uh, it's not a problem. Uh, if silver starts leaching off from my teeth and it starts getting into my body, and reaches a concentration level which is harmful for my body, then, uh, then it's, a, it's a problematic. But otherwise, if it's there in my, uh, in my tooth and it doesn't leach at all, or if it leaches, it leaches as a very, very minute fraction. You, you remember that uh, even uh, many of those, uh, 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 like uh, burfis and all that, people have used to have those silver work. So a little bit of silver is not bad, a little bit of silver is in fact uh, considered good because it uh, kills certain bad bacteria in our body. If you get a homeopathic medicine, they use silver in the homeopathic medicine. Even copper is used, so a little bit of the, this heavy metals are not bad for our health. Even arsenic and medicine is also there in, uh, in homeopathy. So, but if you use it for the higher concentration, then it becomes a problem. There is chromium in your multivitamin, so, but uh, if you have chromium in higher concentration in chromium-6, it becomes a problem. So in terms of impact on the body, it depends on the concentration level and uh, how long you are exposed to it. That's uh, why, that's how the impact is decided. That's uh, the toxicity part of uh, any heavy metals or any chemicals for that matter. 
Okay, so that's uh, uh, we had some other questions on which organization provides jobs in this field or what what are the businesses related to this field. So that kind of goes a little bit uh, kind of not directly related to this course. So this is goes a little bit beyond the course, uh, but uh, there are there are several e-waste management companies are there and uh, some uh, which we will we in the week three we talk about those e-waste management companies. Uh, but in uh, that, so of course, the U.S. recycling companies, uh, people can get job there. Uh, people can get, get job in government agencies, uh, can work in consulting firms, or uh, with the companies uh, trying to uh, manage e-waste, come up with a recycling process and all that. So the recovery of uh, precious metal. So all those things are uh, uh, there. People, people can get the job. So what are the business? Uh, related to this field, uh, of course, recycling and all that recovery, and those are the businesses related to that. So I think that's uh, 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 pretty much it. We'll uh, kind of uh, stop the video at this particular point. So it's uh, again, uh, we uh, let us know how you uh, felt about uh, this particular video, and uh, if you, uh, we will try to do it again uh, from uh, time to time, not uh, this course and other courses as well, so where we can interact. Put, put your questions on the discussion forum and uh, which also helps us learn some new stuff too. So thank you and keep enjoying the course.